What's up guys? Um, today I'm going to do a quick video covering just gate four Brel for solo raids. Uh, I had a request, shout out Freddy Z for a, a gate four Brel guide. So that's what we're doing. Uh, let's hop right in. So gate four Brel. Um, <laughs> this is a, a really big deal. This gate, it was like um, very difficult for a very long time. So don't feel bad if it takes you a while to get it. Uh, a lot of attack patterns, normal attack patterns that take a long time to get, but we're going to hop into just the major mechanic type stuff. I don't want to take away from you guys actually progging and enjoying the game with the, the pattern. So we'll cover things that I think might give a new player uh, trouble in here. And uh, all right. So battle items for gate four Brel. I highly suggest you bring time stops. Um, this is a gate that there's a lot of patterns that will try and knock you off the edge and they'll, they'll catch you off guard. Anytime you see like a yellow indicator from the boss, that pattern can knock you off the edge. So until you get more comfortable dodging and, and knowing what to do, have time stops on your bar and just use them liberally. If uh, you know, you're scared, you're not sure what's going on. Just use the time stop. You know, it'll help you survive longer to see more patterns. So definitely bring those. If you're struggling on damage, you can bring dark grenades. If you are on a slow class, you should bring a sprinter's rope. This just makes your character move faster, increases your move speed by 40%. So if you have to drop off a meteor and you have to run a, a decent distance, then this thing can be a lifesaver. Um, in solo mode, I doubt you need whirlwind grenades, but you can bring them. If you're struggling for the uh, Shandy mechanic, um, most classes, I would say all classes probably don't even need this, but if you want to bring it, go for it just to have just in case. <clears throat> so over here, I'm going to pause this in a second. Once this pops up, this is like a mini version of the battlefield that you're fighting on. And eventually when you get into group play, if you decide to do that, the tiles have different numbers associated with them. So you'll see up here it's 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, 11, 12. Approximate clock positions. This game loves clock positions. And in the middle tile, people call that one zero. So this is important for when you go into shape dimensions and you have to remember your pattern. You could practice typing now. If you want, you'll do it in group play. Um, and I can explain this a little more later, but I just wanted you guys to understand this. This is the tile numbering system and it's worth memorizing or, you know, slowly learning um, as you're playing. All right, so let's hop right in here. The very first mechanic she does is going to be shape dimensions. And how this thing works is she'll teleport you inside and she'll shoot a bunch of little projectiles out. They're kind of annoying. I stand over here-ish, and you can dodge most of them. You might get hit, it's not really that big of a deal, but this is normally where I hang out. And then once she's done with these projectile things, I'll run to the middle. And worth noting as well is you see on my screen all these different squares. You will get one of like eight different shapes, I think it is. It's a, a good amount of shapes. And in solo play, this doesn't matter, really. You don't have to memorize what shape you get because you're the only person here. In group play, all eight people get a different shape, everybody in your group. So you have to kind of memorize whatever pattern she shows you in case she calls your shape. You're the one that knows where the safe spots are. That's kind of what this mech is getting at. It's kind of weird in solo mode because you just, you know, do the same pattern twice. So anyway, I'll run to the middle. And we'll wait to see which tile's safe. I always recommend everybody runs right to the middle and then you wait for these tiles to glow. So, boom. I know I can run right down here, bottom left. And the tip for people who are struggling with this is that you don't want to run all the way to the middle of this square. So, you run and then you want to stop when you get right over, like right here. You're good. Don't go any further in. That just makes your life more difficult when you have to get to the next square. So for reference, uh, this is seven o'clock. So square seven would be my first tile. 
wait for the explosion, and then as soon as it explodes, start running back towards the middle. Uh, I know a lot of people will sit there and then be like, oh, I don't know where the tile is, I can't see anything, and they panic. Just start running towards the middle again. You can get to any tile, no problem. You are max move speed during this mechanic. Doesn't matter how much swiftness your class has, everybody will be maximum move speed. So just run and you have plenty of time. So I just start running and then I see where the next tile is. So this was convenient. <laughs> Happens to be this tile. <clears throat> and this might be confusing too, that every time there's a safe zone, there's three tiles. And this one down here that we just came from, all these on the left side were safe. When you are keeping track and calling your pattern, say you want to go to group play someday, we always call the middle tile. So I have square and the first one was seven and this one is zero. Technically one safe and seven safe as well, but just for calling patterns, we always go to the middle tile, always call the middle tile. So, so far square seven, zero. Wait for the explosion, and there will be one more. Always three. Last one, run up here to 11. So if I'm in a group right now, I would type square 7011. And wait for the last explosion. You go close to her, and you'll see in a second she is going to pick a shape. I'm the only one here, so it's going to be square. I ran away, but if you stayed close to her and you were, like, hugging her, you would see... A bunch of shapes glowing um, I probably should have done that so you guys see what it looks like but right when I'm just standing here as long as you like don't move like being this close you want to be very close to her she would show a bunch of shapes <clears throat> and for me for you guys it's whatever your shape was it'll always be whatever your shape is in solo mode because you're the only person here so squares would be popping up around her and I just redo that same pattern so I start Wait for the explosion at seven. Then I go to zero. Then I go to 11. That's all this is. It seems, might seem silly in solo mode because you're the only one here. So you're just doing the same pattern. But uh, again, if you ever transition to group play, it can be anybody's pattern. So you're relying on your teammates here. All right. So that's that mech. Now we get into the first meteors that drop. And in solo mode, and when you guys go to normal mode, you're going to start top. All right. And you see, you're going to get this little cutscene here. Uh, worth noting is you can move during cutscenes in Braille. So you see this big cutscene, you can be clicking around moving. So you can run up top right here. You'll see my character. So you can already one up, be all the way up top because you're going to get this golden meteor to drop. <clears throat> For the golden meteors, you're always going to be dropping them top or bottom. Technically, you know, yes, you could drop them left and right, but if you just want to practice how everybody does this, how all groups do this, you're going to want to start up top. So normal mode, gold starts top here. You'll see it, they get this icon, but there's always a debuff, so you can just watch this count down here. Four, three, two, whenever it's about, you know, it disappears, start running. And you want to be all the way up top, because you see here, this gold meteor is going to hit these three tiles, 11, 12, 1 o'clock, and it also is going to hit zero. We're going to do a quick little tile overview for you guys. So every single tile on the edge can take three hits. A blue meteor is one hit. A gold meteor is three hits. The middle tile is the exception. I think it can tank like, it's been so long, I don't know, 11 hits maybe, something like that. You don't need to know this, doesn't matter. But every time these gold meteor drops top or bottom, you're gonna kill those tiles. Also, what you guys need to learn is that you cannot have more than three tiles destroyed at any given time. So that's the max. If you guys are playing and you drop a blue meteor, you know, in some tile and it breaks the tile, and then all of a sudden you run back to fight and it wipes, you die, you're like, what the heck? It's because you broke a fourth tile. Only can have three tiles destroyed at any given time. So they do regenerate, oh gosh, two minutes, I think maybe. It's, I'm sorry, it's been a while. But uh, when you're doing this in solo mode, just drop the blue tiles on the opposite side of the gold. So I just dropped the gold up here, right? It's 
11, 12, and 1. So if I get blue tiles, I'm just going to go drop them down here at 5, 6, or 7. And I would spread it out just to be safe, depending on how slow the fight is. I don't know how many blue you would get, but just spread them out because eventually these will respawn these tiles up here and you'll get another gold. And then you can drop the gold on the bottom tiles because those tiles have already been weakened by your blue meteors. So you're not wasting tile health, if that makes sense. But anyway, that's... I uh, the fight went kind of quick. Um, this character is 1540, so a little bit over leveled. Um, but yeah, I don't know how long the fight would be if you were just learning this, probably a while. But that's how you do meteors. So, this is what's going to happen periodically when you're fighting. You will just get a blue meteor placed on you, and this will weaken any one of these tiles by one health. So, I suggest you run south. <clears throat> You'll see I just drop at six o'clock. And the tile will glow after this meteor drops. I'll show you these lines will, will gold, uh, glow gold here. Did you see that real quick? <clears throat> so at any given time, you can see the health of a tile based on those symbols. If you drop another blue on that tile, the borders, they kind of really start to glow. And uh, it's visually just trying to tell you, hey, this tile has one life left to not drop anything on it or it's going to break. But that's what I suggest you guys do when you're learning. Just drop your blue tiles opposite of where the gold was. All right. So this mech is the Shandy mechanic and she'll teleport to the middle here and you'll see what happens. The screen's going to zoom out and there's going to be this these two uh, pie explosions and you're just going to want to stand in the safe spot. When you guys are doing this in a group mode, every group I've ever been in, they all just gather down here, but you can technically stand wherever you want. You'll see like right in this area in the middle square, you'll see two little explosions. Here's one. Boom, and the, the circle just keeps coming in. Same spot. So now all I'm waiting for is this blue pulse of light to come outside here, and then I'm going to exit. I'm going to exit to right. Just out of habit, three o'clock. And if you're in a group mode, this would be X3, X3 plus one, but you know, exit anywhere you want. And you're gonna use a sidereal skill here. So Shandy, control X. And what Shandy does is he slows everything down. He also resets your cooldowns, but that doesn't matter here. You're using it just to slow these orbs down. So we'll see, we run to the edge. She slams the ground. You can use Shandy anytime you want now. I run to the edge, use Shandy. A tip for you guys is stay out of the middle of your squares. Run to the edge, any edge you want, because all of these tiles are going to uh, have a bunch of these um, red or gold orbs flying in from the outside. They're gonna be slowed down because of Shandy. In addition to that, half of these tiles are going to have a little uh, black hole in the middle of them. And the way this mechanic works is uh, in solo mode, I assume the game wants you to go inside. Again, I am not positive. In group, some people go inside, some people go outside, depending on if you have a black hole. So like watch when these things spawn. Shandy, these are the black holes. So if I was in a group right now, I would be here. I would stay here. You always stay in your square. Um, whoever is on this square would be going inside. But in solo, I recommend you guys just go inside. I haven't tried staying out to know what happens, but this is a surefire way you'll be okay. So about these orbs that are flying around, you want to pick up at least two gold orbs. That's just a habit you want to get into. Um, technically, if you're going inside, I think you only need one. If you were staying outside in normal play, you would need two gold orbs. So just pick up two every time and then you don't have to think about it. So I'm going to pick up two gold orbs. Take your time. There will always be enough. And then I'm waiting for this black hole to violently shake. The light will go like out and in sometimes to try and trick you. But if you're like, oh, gosh, did it move? Then no, it didn't. <laughs> you will know for sure it, it shakes violently. You'll see in a second. So wait, wait, wait. Oh, there it is. So then you go stand on it. Now, this sucks you into this black hole thing. In, <clears throat> in the real raid, the normal mode raid of this, ver like 
this wouldn't happen. It's one of those mechanics where it's combining everything together to show you what it looks like from every perspective simultaneously, kind of. Uh, that's what they do with these mechs, which is good, but you don't know that that's what they're doing, obviously. It's your first time you've seen this. So this next view that we have here, um, it's, it's kind of, it doesn't transition well into the normal raid, but I'll just tell you what you have to do here, and hopefully it makes some sense for you. So, excuse me. <clears throat> You're inside, and there's going to be these little phantom brells on every tile. And what you want to do is walk into them. They will either do nothing or they will turn. And they can turn clockwise, counterclockwise. You don't have to stress about that very much. What your goal is just to run into a tile that moves. And then you're going to sit there and you're going to be ready to either counter or stagger that tile. So let's see. I think I showed both here. So that one didn't move. Boom. This one moved. You see this one twirling here? And that one went counterclockwise. I believe that means it's counter. So I'm gonna have to counter this statue. And the timing is you'll see she'll reappear in a second and she'll lift her hand up. Here she is, hello, sir. And then I just countered it. When you do that, she's gonna drop a gold orb. And I'm gonna have to pick that up. She drops two gold orbs. Great. So you should be safe. For the whole mechanic, you technically should be safe. Uh, in the real raid, you need one gold orb because there's four people, four statues. Everybody gets one. Solo mode, I you know couldn't test every single different possibility, but um, as long as you find a statue that turns and just stand there and wait to counter or stagger, you're good. So we're gonna go to this next one. She does two rounds of this. That's the same as the normal raid. So we're waiting for more statues to spawn. And just for clarification, if anybody wants to know, the normal raid, these statues that are turning, they're on the outside. We're on the inside right now, but these would all be on the outside and four of your teammates are finding which statues turn or not. And then they have to ping the inside people so they know where to go but you're doing it all at once. So you can see you know, every facet of this mechanic. So nothing there, we go over here, you'll see that this time she turns clockwise. This is gonna be stagger. So you'll see she reappears. I think one skill staggered her. So if you just use whatever your highest stagger skill is, I'm sure you're fine. And I can't even pick up these gold orbs. So I'm fairly certain as long as you get one gold orb, you won't die. Now you're just dodging these projectiles. They just do damage to you. So just dodge them the best you can. You're waiting for the mech to be over. The circle will like suck inwards and you can try and space bar push immunity if you want it, that explosion. If not, you just get knocked down, no big deal. That is all of the mechanics in Braille. There's some other stuff um, that I feel like you'll be able to figure out like periodically these tornadoes will spawn. Half the time, I think people are just going to skip this stuff uh, unless you're doing this on eye level. And if people need a more in-depth guide of other mechanics, I'm happy to make that. But I still want you guys to just be able to enjoy the fight. Brawl Gate 4 is such an epic battle. Um, really, really cool. The visuals, the soundtrack. So have fun with it. Take your time. It's really, really fun. Um, one caveat, which I don't know if this is meant to be, is... I did not get the shape dimension a second time in solo mode. Um, I don't know if that was an accident. I don't know if the damage was too high. I really have no idea. But I wanted you guys to be aware that typically, you know, the shape dimension where I had square and I went on the tile pattern, you normally do that two times. I only did it once. I don't know if that's just because it's solo mode. They cut it down to one time. But I think I went from 40 bars down to zero bars without her ever doing it. Um, but real quick, if they decide that, you know, you're fighting and all of a sudden she teleports to the middle again and she does shapes, the little shape dimension, it's the same thing. But you're going to use the sidereal skill to make your life a little easier on the second one. Uh, I made a sidereal guide for Brel. 
And if you guys want to see what this looks like, I'll link it in the description and you can just go look at that gate four real quick. But on the second shape dimension, she will reverse your controls up to two times. So if you're clicking over here to go top right, your character would move bottom left. And that can be kind of tricky. So what groups normally do is they will just use Anana. Um, it's a special sidereal skill to remove that randomness. So you can just click like normal, do the, the shape dimension exactly the same as you did the first time. Um, yeah, I was shocked when we didn't get it. When I didn't get it again, I was like, is that a bug or is that intended? So I don't know. You guys can let me know if you did solo mode, if you got shape dimension a second time, I'd actually appreciate the feedback because I'm curious. Uh, but that's everything. Again, meteor placement is going to be tricky for you. Just do your best to not waste tile health when you guys are learning this fight. Again, you drop the gold up top first, drop blues on the bottom. That way, when they respawn, you have to drop another gold. You're already dropping a gold and destroying weakened tiles. You're not destroying perfectly healthy tiles. So try that out. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you guys need any more clarification, I'm happy to do like a super in-depth guide if anybody wants it. But you guys just let me know. Otherwise, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.